The best way to explain it. Episode 9. Everybody to yet another episode of the best way to explain it, the podcast that actually knows who let the dogs out. Who 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 who? Indeed. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I, hey, I like it. I, <laughs> it just kind of came yeah. to me, you know. Yeah, that's that's genius. I love it. That uh, yeah, that song reminds me of those times when elementary schools would have the roller skate night. Did you ever have those? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, actually, uh, one of the one of the memories I have of those is they they put it on the same day as my birthday. Oh, nice! And I really just wanted to. I did not like roller skating, yeah, and so I did not want to go. But because it was my birthday, I was having people over. And my mom was telling me, "Okay, you have to go because all these all, all your friends have have been waiting to go on this rollerblading trip." So I had to go rollerblading, and they literally sang to me. All the you know, hundred people that came on that rollerblading night sang to me while I was trying to skate around the the rink, and I kept falling down, and it was the worst birthday I've ever had. <laughs> I it could have gone either way for you there. I I didn't know which way it was gonna go. Either either <laughs> your heart was just like filled with joy, or you couldn't rollerblade. That's Gosh, that's awesome. Was- I re- I remember. Uh, the rollerblade nights once you started to get up into like fifth and uh for me it was sixth grade as well because i was in uh missouri at the time and Mm -hmm. we would do the couple skate at the end of the thing well my mom was the chaperone and she was sitting at the teacher's table talking with all the teachers because she was also a a substitute teacher and uh all the teachers were like why do they do a couple skate for all the uh, kids at this like none of them like each other and then wait what grade were you? I had, like fifth or sixth grade okay yeah so uh then like one of them looks out out and sees me skating with some chick and they're like isn't that <laughs> your son out there <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah oh man yeah. that that's okay you know what I thought I had the worst story but I think having my mom see see me skating with another girl in fifth grade that might be that might that might take the cake yeah yeah it was all good though oh. it was all good yeah you still talk to her <laughs> no no <laughs> I, I cut ties long time you think ago she's listening hey maybe i don't know i don't Say i don't hi. really reach the missouri crowd i don't think yeah well we'll, we'll need to make a dedicated effort yeah there. i'll why don't you say hi i'll, I'll do my best <laughs> i'll send it their way yeah, sounds good. No, <laughs> just uh, find her on Facebook and send her this episode yeah. and say, this is for you. I haven't forgotten. Yeah, it'd be like those people that you haven't talked to in a long time and they're like trying to talk you into joining some pyramid scheme or something. Oh, Only yeah. it's just a podcast. That's totally happening. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I seriously, people have approached me about those. Oh, yeah. But I was... I was not about it. Yeah. One one dude approached me. I didn't know him. He saw that I had an eight-county license plate. For all those of you in big cities, Nebraska has their counties on the license plate by number. <laughs> for all but for, two. Uh, yeah, except for, well, Douglas, Sarpy, and then what's Lincoln's County? Lancaster. Lancaster. Oh, Sarpy doesn't? I, I think so. I, I okay. think they're in the, the three and three place now. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. anyway, <laughs> he saw the, that I was from Grand Island or Hall County area and he was like, Hey man, uh, you want to join up with my pyramid scheme? But he, he was a little smoother than that. He was just like, right. Hey, you want to earn some extra money? And I was like, heck yeah, I don't have a job yet. So I gave him my number and then he texted me like daily for the next month. Oh yeah. Man. So we Gosh, went out on a that... few dates and had a little fun, but mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you were you were kind of a tease, and then yeah. I had to let him down easy. I, I got a few free meals out of it. Sure. <laughs> no, I uh, one of my friends actually approached me in college. Well, because the way they approach you is, hey, do you want to make some money? Yeah. And and working for yourself, and you're like, uh, yeah, 
but how? <laughs> and then they they do their pitch, and I I think to myself, oh, y- you meant that, yeah, not, not actually being an entrepreneur, yeah. Well, they, they're always like, yeah, you'll make money. And then from what I've heard, I've never really sat down and gone through it. Like you earn credits on your own website to purchase from yourself or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm, I've am i never been sure about how that actually yeah. worked. So. Man, rollerblading, pyramid schemes, we're hitting everything tonight. License plates. License plates. I mean, you get the full the full package when you listen <laughs> when you listen to the show. That is true. We yeah. we try to provide extreme value for for what you guys pay. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Oh man. So well, I I believe our little intro bit is over. What are we learning about tonight? Tonight or today or this morning or whenever you're yeah, listening. Yeah, that's true. You will be learning about the next layer of the internet that we're going to talk about, which is called the link layer of the internet. So that's, uh, that's something that that's going to happen. Is it like dressed in green and does it carry a master sword? And no, actually it does not, but I'm proud of you for recognizing that that's link and not Zelda. Boom. You're welcome. Well done. Also, your nerd card has been, I played uh, Wind Waker like it was my job throughout middle school. Oh, so. seriously? Yeah. yeah, that was that was mine, yeah. all the time. Quite, but quite no, actually, the establishment they had going on then. Right. Yeah. Actually, this has nothing to do with a uh, cell shaded cartoon character, but in fact, it has to do with the next layer up from the physical layer, which I talked about in the previous episode on the internet, which I believe was episode seven. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I'm going to assume you have. And so if I say some stuff that you don't understand, then just know you're missing out because you haven't listened to that episode, which you can listen to at the best way to explain com slash seven. And that will take care of you. All right. So last time, We left off after having discussed the first layer of the internet, the physical layer, right? So if you remember, we're going through the five layers of the internet. Uh, So we just talked about the actual physical connections that needed to be made in order for information to flow from one place to another. You know, fairly important, fairly important concept. So some people combine this next layer that we're going to talk about, the link layer, with the physical layer, but I sort of like separating it. Just FYI, there is some overlap with the physical layer, so I really hope you paid attention. All right. I hope you pay attention, Brian. I, I didn't last time. I probably won't this time. Right. This is where it gets interesting. <laughs> awesome. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> oh. Are you making Star Wars I've, references right there? I've always wanted to make that uh, reference and have it not be awkward. This, this is where the fun begins. I love it. <laughs> Never tell me the odds. Okay, no, that, that didn't work. <laughs> I, I hate uh, sand. I hate sand. No, okay. Well, we've regressed in a prequel area uh, territory, so <laughs> probably should get going. <laughs> All right. So the link layer, which is sometimes called the data layer, but most of the time called the link layer, occasionally called the data link layer. So any of those names is going to refer to this. And so this is what controls access to the physical layer. So if you remember, I talked about how there are addresses and protocol data units at almost every layer. Well, the address for this particular layer is the MAC address. So MAC, M-A-C, stands for Media Access Control. It's supposed to be a unique physical address for the network interface controller on devices, or the NIC, N-I-C. So those are some acronyms for you. And so each device needs some sort of physical thing that connects it to the network, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't have access to the physical layer. So this thing is what we call the network interface controller of the device. So the NIC of the device is the physical thing that connects the device to the network. And so at the link layer of the internet, the data needs to know where it needs to flow. So we need an address that tells the data, hey, if you've got information to send to this or for this person, send it to this address. Now, I say this MAC address is supposed to be unique, but you can actually change your MAC address if you want. Well, you can kind of change it. You can spoof it, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to assume that the MAC address you have is unique and unchangeable just for simplicity's sake. And you can Google how changing it works if you want to. 
And okay, so what does the MAC address look like? Well, it's a 48 bit, and if you remember bits from the very first episode, the best way to explain it.com slash one, where I talked about CPUs, uh, it's a 48 bit address of values. So that, it, that means it can hold two to the 48 addresses, which is a buttload of addresses. A, a buttload. A, a is that a technical Eight. term? Yeah, yeah, that's actually the that's the term. How how much is a buttload? It's at least two to the forty eight. Okay, all right. Yep. Well, it so, it could be lower though, right? What do you mean? Like a buttload could be lower than two to the forty eight. Nope. Equal to or greater equal than. Equal to or greater. Than? A lower okay. bound. All right. Lower bound butthole buttload. Good to know. So yeah. So, <laughs> the way these addresses are defined is actually another IEEE 802 standard, so you can look up how they do that if you want. If you remember, I talked about, at the end of last episode, or the last internet episode, I talked about the IEEE 802 standards, so MAC address is another standard that they've defined. Um, so, if you go to the command line of your Windows computer, uh, which you can do by just going to like your search bar and typing CMD, and that'll be your command prompt, um, you can type ipconfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, space, slash, all, A-L-L, and you'll see a bunch of text that comes up that probably is going to look really intimidating to you. But if you look for the words physical address, then to the right of those words is a number with some dashes every two numbers of letters. So uh, it, this number is in what's called hexadecimal format. So that's if you remember back again to episode one, I talked about base two. Well, hexadecimal is base 16. So in, so we have the numbers zero through nine, but in order to represent all 16 values that are in base 16 we use the letters a through f so that's why there's going to be this mix of letters and numbers so that's the mac address that that um number with the dashes every two numbers of letters so okay um that's the mac address for for that specific network interface controller um so the reason the number has letters in it oh again again yeah because it's hex hexadecimal right i just said jeez that. man um I know. I'm it, it, doing bad. It's okay. It happened to me last time, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, we're we're still learning, <laughs> and they're learning <laughs> along with us, right? And we we appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who have not taken the initiative to look at your own MAC address, seriously, come on, it's super easy. Um, but it's basically just going to look like six sets of two letters or numbers with dashes in between them. Sometimes you'll see it with colons instead of dashes. Um, and each two letters or numbers represent eight bits. So hex represents eight bits really well, which is why we use it. Because two two digits in hex represent eight bits. So it's a pretty convenient way to, to represent bits. Okay. Okay, so that's your MAC address. So it just says this is the physical location of this device. Or the, this is the f- way in which physical information will flow into my device. This is how... This is where it is. So uh, it's just a way for the network to tell which network interface controller is which because there's going to be a bunch of these on the network, presumably if you have a bunch of different devices on your network. So now we're going to go to the PDU or the protocol data unit. So in the link layer, we're going to use a frame as our PDU. So basically a frame is just a chunk of data that contains a header and a footer of information. So the header of the information tells the network usually things like, where should I be sent? If I can't go there, who do I tell? They also pick up information along the way to the destination because they're going to go through multiple different um, like routers and, and, and networks on the way to their destination most of the time. So this brings me to one of the more important topics about the link layer, which is network topology. So network topology is the physical and logical arrangement of a network so if you think about the internet, everything seems to be connected with with everything, right? So that's how we all know about each other's Facebook and Twitter feeds, right? Because it's the internet is literally just, the, you know, it's an internetwork. It's a network of networks. So um, the, the problem is, though, we don't want to have a physical line or a Wi-Fi signal coming from every single other computer on the internet, right? That would be, you know, ridiculous and stupid. That would be way too much connections that you'd have to worry about and just really unnecessary 
So what we have then are devices that help to relay the information to the appropriate computer. Now, to really understand this, you need to know about the three types of devices that are used in relaying network traffic. Now, the way in which each device in the network is arranged and the type of device matters in who can hear and see what someone else is doing. And when I say that, I mean in terms of your computer, not, you know, you as a person. Now, each of these devices has what are called uh, ports. So these ports are usually places where Ethernet cables can be connected. If you remember Ethernet cables from last time. Um, again, super important that you're listening to each of these one after the other. So suppose there are four ports in each of these devices that I'm going to talk about. So the first device we'll talk about is the hub. So a hub is the dumbest of the three devices. Now what it does is it, if you suppose that there's some network traffic, and again, traffic is just a network term for data. Um, so suppose some network traffic is sent on an Ethernet cable to one of those ports. What the hub is going to do is relay that traffic to every other port it has. So say you had four computers connected to the hub, then every one of those computers is going to receive the network traffic. Everyone can see everyone else's traffic, see in quotation marks, um, on, the, on the network. Uh, the computer itself then is going to look at the header of the frame to see if the traffic is meant for that computer. If it is, then it does something with the data, and if not, then it's going to discard it. So hubs are really dumb, but they're cheap and quick and easy. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically you have traffic coming into the hub, and the hub's just saying, yeah, I don't know who this is going to, so all you people are going to get it, and you guys just figure it out. So I... Uh, Kind of, it might be a bad analogy, but could that kind of be like the homepage of Google or something? How do you mean? Like everyone goes to the homepage and then they traffic elsewhere from there, kind of? I, I don't know. Maybe it, um, it's a bad analogy, I guess. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure that that necessarily is correct. Right. It would, I think it would be, okay, so say you had somebody send mail to the post office. Yeah. And the post office, because this is electronic data, so it's not going to be a perfect analogy. So the post office just makes a copy of every single letter. Okay. Because the, let's just say the people that work at the post office are super lazy or they're just super dumb and they don't know who it's supposed to go to. So they just stick a copy of that letter in everybody's mailbox and say, and they're just going to trust you that, hey, if this letter is meant for you, you're going to know what to do with it. And if not, you'll just discard it. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense? Okay, so that's what a hub is. That's why I say it's dumb. It just it yeah, doesn't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't do it anything doesn't special. Know anything? Okay. Right now, I would say the hub is dumb because we also have what's called a switch. So the switch is the second device I'm going to talk about. Now a switch is very similar to a hub, except it's smarter. You still have the four ports, and again, four is just an arbitrary number. It could be any number, really. It's just it's physical space. That's the limitation here. Now switches learn, in quotation marks, which computer is associated with each physical MAC address after a few messages, and then they are able to only send information meant for that computer to just that computer. Nobody else can see it. Now, this learning process is extremely quick. It really takes barely any time at all. So switches do the same thing as hubs, but they're just more efficient and, and really more secure because not everybody's going to be getting the data from that that's meant for everybody else. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So a switch is just like you somebody sends mail to the post office and the post office looks at the you know the designated address and they stick it in the appropriate mailbox. So nobody else is going to be able to see that except the desired recipient. All right. So that's a switch. Yeah. So a switch hub and then the third one is the router. Now a router is quite similar to a switch at layer uh, what are we on? Layer two. But um, it, it does more on the next layer, which is the network layer, which we're going to talk about next time. Um, they're programmable and really popular, and you likely have one. And yeah, like I said, we're going to talk more about routers in the next layer because that's where really the interesting stuff happens with them. But for now, just know that they're basically switches at layer two. Or most routers have a switch, I guess, technically. Okay. It would be the proper term. Um but you can buy switches that are separate it, from routers. Is that what a, a gigabit switch is? Um, what do you mean? Like like that if you see that term within a router? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think so. Um, okay. So like, 
I, I imagine your router probably has Ethernet ports. Coming yeah, up it has four, and then we also have just a straight up gigabit switch that is uh, it it connects via one Ethernet, but it can take in like four to eight. Right. So that one connection is going to hook you up to what's called the WAN or the wire or the wide area network, okay, which yeah. we're going to talk about later. And then those other four will connect your LAN, your local area network. Okay. And that'll make more sense yeah. later. So don't get hung up about that just yet. All right. Okay. So how does a switch or a router know which computer to send the traffic to? Well, it uses what's called the address resolution protocol or ARP for short. So ARP's just a protocol that's going to tell the switch or the router which physical address is associated with which IP address. And we're going to talk about IP addresses at the next layer in much more detail because that's that's where the the that's the address of layer three, um, whereas now we're at MAC addresses, yep. right? Um, so the frame then carries information about IP addresses. So these IP addresses need to be translated or resolved into physical addresses since this is this is what uh, this layer of the internet understands. It doesn't understand IP addresses, only physical addresses. So the process for ARP is not really that hard. So first, when data is received by the switch or the router, it's going to look in what's called its ARP cache, which just lists the corresponding MAC address from the IP address of the data it's just received. So it has like a table that it just looks up and says, oh, this IP address, oh, that's that belongs to this MAC address. or And it just does that look up every time it gets, you know, information. Okay. So... That if it finds it, then you know all's well and good, and it's just going to send it to that physical address. But if it doesn't find it, it's going to send out what's called an ARP request, which basically says, "Who has this destination IP address? Tell me, please." And then so this request is sent to all the devices that are connected to the switch. So then it's going to wait for an ARP response from the device that has been assigned that IP address, and then this device is going to send back its MAC address so that the switch can update its table and know that the MAC address is associated with that IP address. So Does that kind of make yeah, sense? Yeah, so they taught ARP manners to say please and stuff? Like, Pretty much. Wow, that's actually, really that, cool. that, <laughs> that's funny. Um, if you look, there's a program, and actually, if anybody wants to ever download it, it's called Wireshark. You can just, it's free and, you know, easy to install and everything. But what you can do is you can capture network traffic and it'll you can look at each packet individually and you can it'll break it up into nice little headers so that way you don't have to look at the just the raw data it'll say this is what this part of the packet is this is what this part of the packet is but if you look on wireshark's um i don't know i don't know what you call it like it's incoming packets when you it, cuz it'll it'll sort them by protocol yeah and so if it you look at the art packets it actually in english it says who has this IP address tell this IP address, so like oh, it have cool. they they have that spelled out in English, even though I mean that's obviously not exactly yeah. what the computer knows, but I just think that's kind of funny. <laughs> that is pretty cool, dude. But you seriously should try installing Wireshark because yeah. you can actually, if you're able to get on the internet, you can or on the on the uh, same network as other devices, you can, um, and you're able to. Uh, pull off what I'm going to talk about uh, just pretty soon, you'll actually be able to look at other people's network traffic and, you know, look for passwords, credit card numbers, and stuff Ooh. like that. So I'm going to teach you guys how to exploit this um, ARP protocol here. Dangerous. So. Yep. Okay, so with all these devices in mind, we're going to briefly discuss... Um, some security issues with this layer. Now, one of the biggest and easiest security flaws in how we set up the internet is called MAC spoofing. Now, if you remember back when I said you could change your MAC address, and this is technically isn't supposed to be changed, um, though it is legal. Um, uh, so if you do it correctly, you can actually bypass some firewalls and see other people's traffic that you aren't supposed to. So, for those of you who don't know, firewalls are just filters on your network that can deny traffic coming in from certain places based on a number of different factors. You can configure a firewall to look for certain things that might be dangerous to let on your network. Now, one of these factors might be that a firewall blocks traffic coming in from a specific MAC address. Well, 
If the attacker just changes their MAC address, then the firewall is just going to let them through, right? Since the chances are the firewall isn't configured to block the new MAC address. Or if a firewall has set up a what's called a whitelist, which is just a list of allowed MAC addresses, then you can change your MAC address to be one of those allowed MAC addresses, and then the firewall will let you through. Okay. So, yeah, so that's what a firewall is. So if you ever peruse down to, like, I don't know, if you ever get firewall pop-ups on your computer, that's what it's talking about. You have something installed that blocks certain network traffic yeah. and allows other network traffic. Could, could so. any of that affect uh, net network access types? Are you going to talk about that next time? Oh, or? network address tresla- translation? Uh, in a- NAT, yeah. 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 yeah, yep. network address translation. It's actually a layer three protocol. Okay. Um, which I will talk about. But, yeah, that has more to do with which ports are open on your um, on your uh, router. Oh, okay. Um, which will make more sense within the coming episodes. Cool. But, yeah. Cool. So, um, fu- but, yes, firewalls could, because firewalls could say, no, nothing is allowed on this port. So, for example, a- and on Xbox, you need certain ports open okay. in order for... Um, because certain processes that Xbox uses run on those ports that allow you to play with people. And so if your firewall is configured to not let, you know, traffic go through those ports, then it's not, then your NAT type is going to be strict or what. Yeah. I I think it's strict, right? Strict or moderate. Typically mine's moderate because we have firewalls that uh, like block people from accessing our internet or something. I don't know. Right. So what you could do is go on your router and set up what's called like port forwarding, which opens up those ports. Um, and the, the the port numbers are you can just Google them. Okay, um, cool. But yeah, then that would theoretically change. Yeah. It, so, but we'll talk again. Like I said, that's a layer three protocol, which we will talk about more when we get there. Okay. Okay. So let's teach you guys a security attack or a security vulnerability here so mac spoofing or changing your mac it can also be used to get traffic intended for someone else now there are tools that exist that let you you know trick the network interface controller into believing its mac address is different than what it actually is so i said you could change it that's not technically true you can just say you can tell your network interface controller that your mac address is something else and it'll believe you but technically the actual physical address is going to remain the same so why would you ever want to do that well there are a number of illegitimate reasons you can do it and the first like i just i talked about previously you can get around potential whitelists that might not let you connect to someone's wi-fi So this is a common tactic that hotels and restaurants that ask you to pay for Wi-Fi, that's what they do, is they say, okay, until you pay us money, we're not going to let your MAC address connect to our router. But if you find, but say you find the MAC address of a device already on the whitelist, then you could just change your MAC address to their MAC address and the router will be none the wiser. So uh, there's a, there's a piece of software called, uh, oh, what's it called? Arrow, Arrow Dump, I think is the name of the the software. Okay. Um, you can run it. I think it's on Linux, um, <laughs> which is just an operating system. But it can. It just takes packets from out of the air. So remember how in the physical layer, wireless internet is just radio waves. So what it can do, it just it finds those radio waves in the air and it'll take them. So if you find the radio waves of a um, uh, computer that's connected to the Wi-Fi already, you can look at the network traffic and look at what the MAC address is of that computer. And since they are already on the network, you can use, um, oh, there's a few different programs out there that you can use to change your MAC address. You can just Google them. You can just change your MAC address to that MAC address that you just found, and then it should just let you onto the internet. Fun, so. fun, fun. <laughs> never pay for internet again right <laughs> <laughs> well i i already don't at hotels and stuff but that's pretty cool yeah yeah so that's just like a way to do it now if they have a if it's password protected there are some other stuff you can do but we won't get into that um <laughs> i'll just teach you guys how to never pay for wi-fi again <laughs> it's high value in this episode 
there is a lot of value. So that's yeah, that's something uh, that's something cool you can do. So that's one illegitimate reason. Another one is you might want to spoof your MAC address to perform a so-called man in the middle attack. And this is essentially what it sounds like. It's essentially you can spoof your MAC address to be someone else's, and then the router is going to forward the traffic that was meant for the other person onto you, which is you know pretty valuable, especially if they're sending stuff like passwords and credit cards in the clear, which just means they're not encrypted. Um, so a way you might do this is you can take advantage of the ARP protocol, right? Um, because of the way it it sends out its requests, it actually doesn't verify that um, you're being honest when you say that what your MAC address is and it just kind of takes your word for it when you do it and so if you uh, set up your computer to do what's called gratuitous ARP replies which means that you're constantly going to be sending yes I have that IP address send me traffic like just repeatedly it's it's going to associate your computer with the IP address of somebody else's computer, and then it'll just send you all their traffic, and then you can look at it and do whatever devious things you want to with it. Man, you are turning our audience into a bunch of hackers. <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually no joke. There's software out there. If you if you look at a Linux or an operating system called Kali Linux, it comes pre-installed with software that will pretty much do this all for you if you want it to. Well, if you're running a Linux operating system, you might as well know how to hack everyone like you right, probably are right. do anyway but yeah yeah so i mean it's out there if you want to just uh don't do it to me please um and oh yeah just so you know i should probably add this caveat don't do it this stuff is illegal don't do it <laughs> it so oh well, yeah good to know after the fact it's illegal and unethical but it is something you can do yeah so that'll be my my caveat so do it. Use it for good and for educational purposes, like I do. Okay, that NSA that was not an admission of guilt. <laughs> so, did, did you I have to perform these in uh, class? Yeah, yeah, actually, I'm doing a project on ARP spoofing. Cool. So. Yep. All right, so that's uh, that's Mac spoofing for illegitimate reasons. Now there are perfectly legitimate reasons to change your MAC address. So suppose you're using a network interface controller that quits working, right? So you have this router that has this specific MAC address and it just goes down. And suppose your ISP or your internet service provider only allows traffic to that network card. Well, you need to change your new network card's MAC address to to the old address in order to be allowed internet access, right? Otherwise you wouldn't be allowed through the whitelist. And another reason you might want to spoof your MAC address on public networks, which will prevent you from being used in one of the attacks that I mentioned. So suppose you're getting ready to connect to a public network at a coffee shop and you don't want your MAC address out, you know, for anybody that might be sniffing traffic there. You can just spoof your own MAC address while you're connected to that network and nobody will know your real MAC address. Cool. Also very mm-hmm. scary because I know like someone could probably just go to a coffee shop and steal all my information right now. Oh yeah, no, it'd be uh, don't ever. I wouldn't do any like serious stuff on, um, on like public networks. But though, to be honest, if you're using um. If you look at the in your network bar or not your network bar in the browser in the address bar. If it says HTTPS, then that means the traffic you're sending is encrypted, which means even if they have it, it's going to be tough for them to figure out because, yeah. you know, the encryption's really high standard now. So yep. you'd probably be fine, but just to be safe, maybe do your banking at home. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my tip for you guys. Okay. So one more thing we're going to talk about before we're, you know, done with this layer. And that is something that I just mentioned before, which are LANs, which are local area networks, and WANs, which are wide area networks. Now, these acronyms are used quite commonly, but I think they're kind of rarely explained particularly well. Now, the reason I'm mentioning LANs in this layer is because LANs primarily deal with link layer technologies. Now, WANs aren't really relevant here, but I'm going to mention them since they kind of go hand-in-hand with LANs. 
Now, LANs are basically what they sound like. Uh, they're local area networks. So suppose you have a few devices that you want to be able to talk to each other and that all of these devices are in relatively close proximity to, to each other. Well, you would need to create a network for those devices. But since they're really close together, we can create what's called a local network, hence the name local area network. So if LANs are for devices close together, then clearly WANs are for devices that are farther apart or in a wide area, so they're fairly aptly named. But why do we need two different kinds of networks? Well, because what we've done is make LANs really good at communicating between devices close together, because LANs usually make use of only one router or switch and thus, um, at least in the fastest networks, are able to have all the devices physically connected to that router or switch. But if the devices are far apart, then the devices can hardly use the link layer technologies we've talked about, right? Because they're going to need to use some more sophisticated networking. Yep. Now, we're going to get into this distinction a little bit more in the next layer, but I just want to quickly give you an example of a LAN versus a WAN just to hopefully really clarify this for you. So think about the Wi-Fi you have at your house, okay? So you probably have a router and a modem or, you know, a router modem combo and this uh, router modem gives you your internet. That's probably all you recognize that is going on. That's probably what the cable company told you to do. And, and you're, you're okay with that and probably should be. Um, <laughs> so the Wi-Fi you have at your house, though, is a LAN. That's a local area network. Because think about it. All your devices are connected to that router and they can all communicate with each other through the LAN. But suppose you wanted to talk to a different device that isn't on your LAN. Then you'd need to, your LAN to be connected to a WAN. So specifically, the WAN they're connected to is the internet itself, right? So think about it. The internet is the widest network in the world. It's essentially a bunch of local networks that are interconnected, hence, you know, the internet. So that's what a LAN is versus a WAN, and you'll probably be able to see the distinction a little bit more clearly in the next layer we're going to talk about. So, so yeah, so the way, you know, the internet is very well named. It's just interconnected networks, right? So you have your own little network at your house, and, you know, Brecken, you have your own little network at your house. I have my own, well, this is a little yeah, bit, you, I might even have a, a WAN, to a be different. honest. Because I'm at a yeah. college, so they they have a WAN. But basically, a WAN is essentially whenever there's multiple LANs within a certain location that are connected, that's when we start calling them a WAN. It's kind of an arbitrary difference. But... Okay. So if you remember what I talked about, you said you had a gigabit switch that had a one port that you connected with and then four going out. Yep. So the reason that is is because that port that's going in that's what's going to give those other four ports their connection to the networks outside of the local network okay so if your devices didn't ever need to talk any to anybody outside of just your network then there really wouldn't be a need for that um that gigabit switch but because you know you want to do things more than just you know i message your mom <laughs> Uh, you're going to want that switch that allows you to be connected to other networks throughout the world, right? Yeah. So that's a LAN versus a WAN. Okay, cool. So yep. if I can make it confusing, a WAN is a LAN of LANs. Sure. <laughs> not not I think exactly. that's probably but right. Yeah. Right. Like the gist of it is a wide area network has multiple LANs within it. Correct. Yeah. That are connected together. Yeah. Also, uh, for our Call of Duty playing friends and possibly other video games, but I've mostly seen it on Call of Duty, uh, that's what the LAN party is all about. So you all connect to the mm -hmm. same router or something, and it doesn't necessarily have to be plugged into the internet. You just play together because it's all networked together. Correct, yep. right. You're still using a network, but supp so suppose if you're like an old school Black Ops Zombies player. I mean, you know what I'm talking Classics. about. Classics. So you have your Xbox 360, and you have your Ethernet coming out of your Xbox 360, and say so you plugged it into another Xbox 360. Yep. Well, that's a LAN connection. There's still a network there. It's just the only communication that's going on is between your device and 
or your Xbox and the other person's Xbox because there's really no need for you to be connected to the internet. I mean, unless you want Mule Kick, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, but that that's a good that's a good way of thinking about it. The the LAN yeah connection yeah. There. That that helps so. at least our Xbox playing crowd out or slash right. PS3 most or, or PS4 whatever PlayStation. Right. I think at least five people will know what's going yeah. on at this point. Well, uh, wow, all of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, just kidding. Yeah. Do you have any questions about this? Any comments? Uh, any concerns? Not really. I, uh, did I, did did, I, yeah, you died too good. You did really well. You, you definitely, uh, took our mantra of being the best way to explain it to yeah. explaining the link layer. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I, it, it really seems like when it's broken down into these different layers, it's easy to understand how the internet works and everything. And I, I didn't realize there was so much physical stuff involved with explaining it at least. You know, right. I, I just thought of it as like the cloud. Right. <laughs> and, well, and I which, know it requires I mean, physical stuff. It's just you never think about sure. it. Right. And and that's what I want to emphasize is that there, the Internet isn't it's not some abstract concept, but no, like it's pretty much just an incredible example of people cooperating because they want to be able to communicate with one another. And uh I think yeah, that's that's probably the most beautiful way I could explain the internet. Boom, I love it, dude. That's that, the most beautiful way to explain. Yeah, it. yeah. So we're gonna be launching another podcast. Here. <laughs> the most beautiful way to explain it. We'll we'll <laughs> write everything in iambic pentameter. Yep. And what? Oh yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. makes sense. And we'll have uh, we'll do our episodes while painting like Bob Ross. Ah, uh, yes. There, there oh, are that's, no, that's nice. there are no bad ways to explain it. There are just happy accidents. <laughs> it's a happy accident, <laughs> just like this podcast. <laughs> it kind of oh. is. It kind of is. It really yeah. is. Well, we really appreciate you guys listening. Uh, we, we're having a blast doing this. So, uh, if you guys really like what you're hearing, and and you think it's gonna be of some value to somebody, uh, we'd really appreciate it if you shared it with somebody. And um, subscribe. That would be helpful. If you went to the best way to explain it dot com slash subscribe, yeah. you can. Uh, I've made all the links super easy for you. You can find whatever it is you're going to be listening to. Um, uh, we're going to be trying to get these up on YouTube here soon. So if you want to subscribe to our YouTube t- channel, at, which is it's just the best way to explain it. Um, that's going to be another way you guys can, uh, can listen if that's your desired way of doing it. Also, we're hoping to get these on Facebook as well, which you can like us on Facebook Yeah. again at the best way to explain it. And yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. And this episode itself is going to be, uh, I'm going to put that back on our, my, the internet page I created. So the best way to explain it.com slash internet is is where I'm putting these episodes so it'll be nice and convenient for you to listen to the whole series. Brecken? Uh I I was just saying uh Scott's got a lot of internet ones and I'm kind of stuck in limbo actually explaining random things. Uh next <laughs> episode I believe I'm doing alcohols or at least like how hey. alcohol is made. And then uh if you have any suggestions, go to the best way to explain com slash suggestions. Let me know what you want me to explain while Scott bores you to death. Just kidding. Right. I, I'm really yeah. interested in this internet stuff now. Um, yeah, I think once you get to this layer kind of lets you take off on stuff that you've probably seen, like acronyms and everything. You're like, oh, I've seen that before. I never knew what it meant, but yeah, I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, um, we'll go ahead and link all that stuff in the show notes, which you can visit at the best way to explain it dot com slash nine. And that, yeah. yeah, do you have anything else? That's to say? about it. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for coming and listening. Talk to you next time. Get learning. <laughs> <laughs>